Pittsburgh, and a very good morning to you. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Well, uh, Pittsburgh is seemed to be set all flutter with Brad Marchand again. So yeah. it's it's like regular times. We talk about half the season. We talk about the Penguins. The other half we split between Tom Wilson and Brad Marchand. It seems like <laughs> um, that. That being said, look, I don't. It's not an above board play. I don't like it at all. But answer me this question, um, because we were knocking this around a little bit. Why don't I ever hear one star or one player, one big player, stand up and go? That guy needs to be down for 15 games, either today, okay. last night, or or better yet, at CBA time. Why don't they stand up and do that? Well, they might do it. Um, incident by incident is a challenge, though. They might do it collectively in the offseason in a broader or general sense and having conversation on the potential leniency of, of certain infractions and uh, potential suspensions. Um, this one is uh, – it's. It's just a flat-out head-scratcher. Um, and, you know, for all of the issues that Brad Marchand has faced in his NHL career, and there have been many, well-documented, we've seen them all, uh, this one is, is right up there with goofy um, and dangerous. I mean, that's pretty obvious. You know, and I, I guess I, I just looked at it again. I watched it several times, as we all did last night. I watched it again this morning prior to this segment. And I, I guess I'm not putting the – blame or should I on the linesman why is the linesman allowing Brad Marchand to coast anywhere near Tristan Terry Mm -hmm. I mean the 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 altercation the you know some are calling it an attack that might be aggressive but the punch had already been delivered so you've got your hands on Brad Marchand aren't you supposed to direct him away from you know further interaction I would think so I've never been a linesman I'm not again throwing this guy entirely under the bus. But I don't, I don't understand how Marshawn got within six feet of, of Tristan Jerry. Then after that, you know, we all saw what happened. Um, and when there's a match penalty assessed, you know, the, the referee was standing right at the goalpost. He saw every second of what went down with, with, Bar- with Brad Marchand. Um, so when a match penalty is assessed, then that tells you the severity of the plays in the eyes of the officials on the ice. So automatically there's an NHL review. And I, I poked around with uh, some of my sources last night on this. And uh, I mean, there's no question he's going to be suspended. I mean, of course he's going to be suspended, but why don't more players come out? I mean, it's a good question. It's it's a good question. I, I think we've seen more heinous and serious infractions than what we saw last night. But again, based on how ridiculous it is, how dangerous it was, potentially, um, the fact that this guy's got a rap sheet longer than both his arms, um, that should be enough, and you shouldn't need Sidney Crosby or Patrice Bergeron or anyone else of star status to come out and say, okay, enough is enough. That, in essence, is what George Paros and the Department of Player Safety should be all about. Do you think Marshawn's track record will actually figure into this, Darren, especially the suspension back in November? I know it's for a yeah. completely separate thing, but still. Yeah, I will. Yeah, no question about that. And, you know, the Department of Player Safety does, you know, they go case by case. But when you are a repeat offender, you know, then you're, you're trying to establish here, well, what is the intent on this play? This isn't a hockey play, as we like to, to, to refer to certain situations, quote, unquote, gone bad. Um, there is a direct intent here. You know, he's, he's upset with Tristan Jerry. Okay, I mean, players are upset with other players all the time, but you don't forcibly try and, and jab the tip of your stick in his throat area or at his face, regardless of the fact that Jerry, of course, is wearing a mask. That doesn't matter. You're trying to establish intent here. And when you, again, look at, at the issues historically that Marchand has faced, some of that most recently has to factor in. And then there's another layer to this, guys, that mm-hmm. isn't always discussed. And that layer isn't just what's happened in the play on the ice, but the number of times that maybe Brad has come close to the line and hasn't quite crossed it where George Paros would pick up the phone and say, okay, enough, enough, like, We've suspended you before. We're going to do it again if you stay down this path. But let's have a conversation about what you're thinking in that scenario. You know, what tips you to the point of crossing the line? And I'm sure Marchand has had a bunch of those conversations in addition to the times where he has crossed the line. So he's not getting the message. 
So how much harsher can the National Hockey League deliver that message? That's what we need to find out. Well, Darren, can I give you another layer to this too? Because the Penguins seem to be backed into a corner. This morning you get one of two things. Oh, my gosh, they should have turned it into a gong show. Where were they? Whatever. Mike Sullivan's team doesn't have a backbone. But then with that little time left, what do you prove by going out and potentially getting somebody's hand broken in a fight? So you're in a no-win situation there, too. Yeah, and it almost never happens anymore, right, where you've got that that old school, doesn't matter how tough you are or who you are, you drop the gloves, you defend the teammate. Um, I was a bit surprised, the lack of reaction. I mean, there was pushback as soon as Marshan took a swipe at Tristan Jerry. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, 15 years ago, there's not a man left on either bench. But that's not the game today, and that's not how it's played anymore. That's not how it's played at any level. So these players that have developed into NHL players haven't played that way their entire career. So I've, I've lost that form or element of, of criticism. Yeah, you do see it from game to game. I mean, if anybody saw the highlights of the Minnesota-Winnipeg game last night, if you wanted a good old-fashioned dust-up, I mean, that's where you got that dose of of old-school hockey. Um, You know, given the history of of Brian Burke and Ron Hextall and how they like their teams to play, uh, I would guess that there was probably a, oh, geez, type of response to it. Uh, internally, but that's not how the team is built, and it's never going to be built that way. And and what you should look at is the results on the ice. And the Pittsburgh Penguins are in a position now where you know they're challenging for top of the division. They're having a heck of a year. So you you can't flip the switch based on one incident, one individual pest-like player in Brad Marchand, and want to tra- change the style of your play. That's that's just not going to happen. But I, I do have a bit of an appreciation for some who want to say, okay, well, what more does it take? I mean, Jerry gets punched in the side of the head by uh, a perennial pest. You know, why wasn't there more of a pushback? And I don't have an answer for that. Uh, TSN NHL insider Darren Drager with us. Let, let's, you mentioned the, the outcome on the ice, and it's a Penguins win. They snapped their uh, little mini losing streak there, and they do it with Tristan Jari making 43 saves, another ridiculous performance from him. And he's now top four or five in all your major goaltending metrics, uh, save percentage, goals against, uh, shutouts. Uh, is he a Vezina level candidate this year? And how much does it surprise you that he's bounced back the way he has? Uh, it has surprised me a little bit. And I think most around the organization, outside of maybe his teammates and Tristan Jari himself, would also say that to some degree they're surprised. You know, I know how much I talked about, you know, what the Pittsburgh Penguins needed going into last offseason. And. How oh, many of us, you guys probably included, were a bit surprised that Ron Hextall didn't feel like he had to go out and do something to at least stabilize that position. Well, good on him. You know, a former goaltender, he saw more in the game than uh, Tristan Jarry than a lot of us did. And Tristan Jarry has responded with superb level goaltending. And answer to your question, he, yeah, darn right, he should be in the Vesna conversation. You know, I mean, the season is, is far from over. Pittsburgh has played 47 games. I'm not sure how many starts Jari is going to get in this second half, but he's going to get a good amount. And when you look at the goaltending numbers, the impact of that goalie on his team, then you can soundly build a case for Tristan Jari to be in that conversation. Darren Drager, TSN, you're a gem. You bring us a lot of insight and more to the point. Our listeners, a lot of insight. Darren, we thank you. We appreciate it. We'll talk soon. You bet. Thanks for having me, guys. Yep, Absolutely. thanks so much, Darren. You know, it is – it. I, you know, that's why I think that the, that first segment, if you want to go back and you listen, how we open the show, and we'll get back into it at 8.30 as well, I feel even better about how we we presented all the sides to this after hearing Darren because Darren came at us with a big old shoulder shrug too. Right. You know, and – I, sometimes I get caught in, okay, now we'll talk to a real deep hockey guy. And how does he feel about this? Or somebody in Canada. And when you get a guy like Darren Dreger that's been around the game forever, that talks to everybody, that talks to people in the commissioner's mm-hmm. office and every, and he wakes up and he analyzes this and he watches it from every angle and he goes, yeah, I shrug my shoulders too, guys. That, that's kind of when you know you hit and you're on the same wavelength as the common fan. That this is just all screwed up with doing. There's a lot of questions being raised about the Penguins' response to this thing, um, both on the ice and off the ice last night. On the ice, I would say 
I think three of the guy, thought five guys that were on the ice didn't even see it happen. I agree to that. So, Crosby did not see it happen. Uh, he, he didn't see at least the stick to the cage, and I don't think anybody else on the ice outside of Latang saw uh, the the punch to the side of the head. Um, and so look, I, I don't think the on the ice response is a problem because I don't want any of the guys that were on the ice in that situation endangering their own safety well, by going after Marshawn. We've seen Marshawn in the past. You know what he's going to do? He's going to skate to his bench as fast as he can. He's not going to drop him with you. Right. And on top of that, the off-the-ice response is the one that has me a little bit more, you know, eyebrow-raised, kind of wondering why weren't they more vociferous in their defense of Jari post-game? Even Jari in defense of himself That's the post-game. That me. And the only thing I keep telling myself is – they're counting the days until they play again in April and that their plan will be. But Mike Sullivan doesn't teach what that does either. That do? Mike Sullivan is, is going to pre- preach to them, go out, play a game. That's what well, we do. And that's fine. And that's fine. But in, in that case, you have to trust the league to actually come down on Mike. Well, this is then. where Brian Burke, I, and I'll put it on a guy like that. Brian Burke, who's an, obviously an old school hockey guy. If, if you're not speaking out against it, you're enabling it. And he's got, look, people listen when Brian Burke talks. Right. Why not say, why should I watch in Boston, my goalie, that happen? Not just punch, but stick work right to the face. Why do I need to watch that? He shouldn't sit silently. He shouldn't. I'll put it on some of the stars, too, and whatever. If you're not speaking out against this, I feel like you're enabling it. And Burke's here for expressly that purpose, to be a a mouthpiece of sorts for for the organization because he carries that weight around the league.